Hello, everybody. Had a couple little stories for you. There's a... Uh, this one actually happened to me. It's like two days ago. I'm at a gas station on my way home from work. There's this guy, right? I'm 18. Seven, 7 to 19, I would think. This guy... Tried to slip a beer... One of those, he had like BDUs on, with those big side pockets. Right next to me. He even looked up at me, like. I kind of just looked down, like, seriously? He made it look like he put it back while I was standing there. But as I walked up to the teller to, you know, pay for my, uh, my I grabbed my stuff like a, a snack and a drink. Guy runs out the store. And he's got a big bulge in his pocket. I'm just like, man, I'm gonna risk going to jail for a $3 beer. Hey, I don't know, but what was funny, and this is what made it really funny, was as he ran out the door, a sheriff pulled up to the, the, you know, the, Mark section of the gas station <laughs> and literally got out the teller was right walked out with me and he was like did he pay for anything and the teller's like nope and he looks at me and I was like yeah it's in his pocket and he runs after him and I'm like damn dude you about to get busted for a, th a for a three dollar beer he didn't even take anything good he took like an ice house I think they're called ice house anyway I'm not sure but, you know, one of those ice brand beers. Just He looked homeless, too, which might have also been a factor. Because I remember when I'm, I was homeless, man, beer was like the currency of the realm. You wanted food. If you had beer to trade, you got food. <clears throat> Clothes, tents, everything. When I was homeless, everyone was drinking beer. Nobody was big into the liquor. It was always beer. Which I don't really understand. Being homeless in Florida, I mean, yeah, I mean, a lot of these people have addictions. I'm aware of that, obviously. But you're going to drink all these things, that, 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 these things that dehydrate you in one of the hottest states in the damn country while you're stuck outside. Okay. Weed, too. If you had weed, weed was another thing. Trade it for anything you wanted. A lot of bartering in the homeless community, believe it or not. Medicine, food, drugs, booze. Those are like your 20s and 100s right there. You know, your 50, 20s, 50s, and 100s, and then your five, your 10s, 5s, and 1s was usually clothes, snacks, shoes, socks, underwear, toiletries, like tooth, you know, toothpaste and stuff like that. They never really exchanged money. Like paying for something from a homeless person was almost never really a thing, because it was like, if, I don't know, that maybe they didn't want to do the inconvenience of having to go buy something. They'd rather just trade for something they want. I don't know. But yeah, so this guy stole a beer right in front of a cop. Didn't even make it to the back of the damn gas station. Got caught. Another weird story. I don't even know when I'm going to label this video because some of these are from work, some of these are just living in Florida. Also, I have a filter on. Let me know if you guys like it. it makes the color a bit more pop-ish, I guess. Um, what was it? Oh yeah, I was driving down the street. I was on my way to work, and no, no, no. I was on my way home from work. I'm sorry. I was on my way home from work. It's dark out. I'm driving now 441. Now, there's a huge section at 441 that I drive down to get to work where there's just nothing there. There's no street lights, there's no stop signs. It's just a huge stretch of open street. Um, a lot of street racing goes on there at night. And I'm driving home, it's like 11.30 at night, and there's these guys, and they're bobbing and weaving in and out of traffic, and I'm, then they're going really slow. And I'm trying to like get around them, but they keep bobbing and weaving in and out of the lanes. It's a two-lane road. 
So finally, I get it. I realize, I'm like, wait a minute. These guys are driving very fast cars. One guy had what looked like a 2017 Corvette, and the other guy had some kind of like a souped up looking Mazda that was like, half of it was like army tan, and the other half was army green camo. And the other guy had like chrome over everything. And I realized these guys are getting ready to street race. So I look behind me, there's no one there. I was like, okay. I match their speed and I get in between the two lanes and I turn off my headlights and I click them on. One, two, three. And then I click them on and I pull my brights down and they just take off. <laughs> they, I guess they wanted me to give them a countdown because as soon as I did that, they took off. But then when I eventually caught back up to them, they immediately saw me coming and moved out of the way. I just thought that was kind of cool. Because <laughs> at first I'm like, what the fuck, guys? Like, let me get around if you're going to drive slow. Then I was like, oh, wait a minute. No, no, no. Because they were bobbing and weaving, but they were revving their engines really loud. So, yeah, it was cool. It was the first for me. Never been used as a 3 2 1 go before. It was actually kind of fun. Then I did see, so I, I've made a couple videos talking about how bad the iguanas are getting. There's another type of lizard that I'm seeing a lot of lately, and it's this weird lizard that runs on its back feet. And they're getting really big in my community. Like, I've seen them before, but I noticed something. I saw what looked like a woodpecker and one of those lizards going at it, fighting. And the woodpecker legit was fucking up this lizard, and it won, and it flew off with it in its mouth. Are we entering a new age here? Because I have never seen a bird take on a lizard that size. That The lizard was easily the same size as the bird. And it killed it and flew off with it. But it was a woodpecker. It was a red-headed woodpecker. Look him up. Type in Florida red-headed woodpecker. Well, not Florida. They're probably everywhere. But, yeah, it was definitely a woodpecker. Um, I noticed some of the iguanas are starting to eat each other, which is what I suspected was going to happen, is they were going to overpopulate to the point that they were going to start killing each other off, because they breed like crazy. I think I said it in another video, I think it's 70 eggs, like up to three times a year, and they have no predators. Like when they're really small, maybe, like fish or gators or whatever, birds, but when they get decent size, they don't have any predators. But the, so many plants, even in the community I work in, so many plants are gone. There's just a bunch of empty flower beds now. They've eaten everything they can. Only one route left, I guess. But I'm getting really tired of pulling iguanas out of people's pools. It's really annoying. And also, I do think, I think I did find there is one thing that eats them. It's uh, snapping turtles. The bigger ones. I, I've seen a snapping turtle take out a lizard. An iguana. So I guess maybe they do have some predators out there when they're... But it really depends on their size. Once they get full grown, nothing's fucking with them. And for my final funny little story of the day, I'll keep this one really short because I'm just not in the mood, but I really want to give you guys something. Um, I was walking from my car to my apartment, and I got a little ping on my phone. I have this little app that, like, sends me random cool little articles and stuff. So apparently out in the wild, um, wolves and ravens are created this, like, symbiotic relationship where they are always traveling together now, and, like... They become friends. Like the crows protect the young and alert the uh, bigger wolves to predators. The crows find carcasses that the wolves eat, and they always wolves always leave enough for the crows to eat. And they kind of just watch each other's backs. And I laughed because one of my buddies, uh, he's a uh, Bloody Raven Six on YouTube, I believe. He his big thing is ravens. He loves ravens. And me, I'm a huge fan of wolves. I love the pack like mentality of lion prides and wolves. Me and him are real tight. I sent him the article, and he found it really funny because he's like, eh, 
ravens and wolves, huh? And I was like, yeah, right? Kind of funny. But, yeah, it's not really a good one to end it on. Um, I do recommend the article, though. Look it up. It's pretty cool, actually, how their little symbiotic relationship works. But it's never it's something that's never really been seen before, but they're capturing it a lot more now in the wild. What are you eating? Yes, you. Don't look at me like that. One of my cats caught a cockroach. So, that was talking to one of my coworkers, and he was telling me this crazy story back when he used to do um, armor transport for banks. And he was telling me how um, he and his buddy, his coworker at the time, they were parked up, and somebody, they saw someone sneaking around the back, and they both drew their weapons because they, they, they don't know who this guy is or what he's doing back there. And um, they posted up they closed the driver's side door, but left the passenger door open, or like cracked, so to speak. And they both got their weapons ready to go. Um, there was more leading up to it, but I can't remember it all. I don't want to butcher the story too much. But basically, um, this guy had a gun, and he was going to try to rob them. And he, the guy cracked the door open just enough that they could see his face, and his partner put a bullet through the guy's mouth. Just like, yo. I've never had to discharge my firearm at work ever, and I've been shot at. I've told you guys the stories. I've been shot at, I've been stabbed, never discharged my firearm at work. Never want to. I've had to discharge a firearm in my house because I was being robbed, but never, ever, ever on the job. And I was just like, that's fucking crazy. The tension leading up to waiting for him to crack open that door must have been fucking insane. But yeah, you never know who you're working with, man. Sometimes you work with some of these guards. They talk, talk some shit. They've never really done anything. And you work with some of these guys who are the nicest guys you've ever met. Cool dude. And, uh, you wouldn't believe it. Like, he's from Colombia. Told me some of the stories. Like, he was there when uh, some of the really bad drug wars were going on. And he was in the military. He was in the Air Force, I believe. And he... <laughs> Nicest guy you could ever talk to. And it's like, dude, he's seen some shit. It's amazing who you meet in this line of work. And the stories they have. That's why I don't think I'll ever run out of stories. When I finally run out of mine, I still got a ton from coworkers that are like, yo, what the hell? Like, <laughs> it's crazy. But anyway, y'all. I'm going to get back to the scary story soon, too. I got a few more that I remember that, uh, you know, buddies were talking. And I was like, yeah, you know, I don't think I've told these on my channel before. But, um, yeah, so look forward to some videos. Don't know when. Um, I made a video last night. I ended up deleting it. I didn't really say things the way I wanted to say them. I was kind of drunk. But I was waiting for the people downstairs to go inside before I made the video. I didn't want to be rude and be talking to you guys while they're talking. So I'm going to try to remake that video and touch more specifically on certain topics uh, when I have a chance. But I want to put it in better words. And be clear-minded, because I was pretty loused at the time when I made that video. I was like three drinks in, because it was my day off, and I only have, I only had that one day off, which is technically today, so. Alright, I'll catch y'all later. Thanks for sticking with me, all 37 of you guys I believe I have now. And, uh, trying to think of some stuff to do for you guys. I'm not very tech-savvy, so I don't really have a computer. I don't have a computer. I have a laptop that's really old. And I was thinking of trying to figure out how to maybe see if I get some software on there that I could do, like, reaction videos. But I know a lot of reaction channels out there nowadays are having a lot of problems from people claiming their videos are getting copyright struck. I'm not tech savvy. I don't know how to do a lot of stuff on the computer. So, I mean, I'm not stupid with it, but when it comes to certain programs, I'm just like, I don't know what I'm doing. But, yeah, I figured we could watch some security videos and I could give you guys my take on how I would have handled it or if they handled it right or wrong. So, maybe in the future. See you guys later.